Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. And once again, we are very honored, privileged, and really blessed uh, to have with us Judge Andrew Napolitano. And I say blessed because he's a man of real, real, true American patriotism, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and a man that really knows the facts of what the Constitution and the Bill of Rights represents, and unfortunately, how much we've lost of it, but a man that fights for our freedom and justice and and, uh, and peace on earth. Judge, thanks so much for being here today. Well, thank you for the generous introduction, and it's a pleasure to be here with you, my dear friend. Um, I'm honored. And, and Again, you know, what you're, what you're doing, people have no idea, the masses, of course, and again, the masses really don't count. Once upon a time, talking about the founding fathers, it does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority, keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men, says Samuel Adams. So it's only that irate, tireless minority that's tuned in that really respect and understand what this country was founded upon and how we've lost it. And there's an article that you that's coming out tomorrow that you have the right to assembly. This is shocking. Last week, the Supreme Court effectively abolished the right to assembly in three southern states by refusing to hear an appeal of a speaker accused of being liable for what a protester did in an audience the speaker addressed. The court exposed all protest organizers and speakers to potentially ruinous financial penalties for what unknown persons have done. Here is the backstory. Take it away. So this guy that I never heard of a young man uh, held a rally in front of a police station in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, protesting uh, excessive use of force by the police. I don't know if, if there's excessive use of force there, if it was political, it doesn't matter. And he harangued the crowd. Somebody in the crowd, unknown and unseen, threw a rock, and the rock hit one of the police officers who was monitoring the rally. The police officers sued the speaker because they don't know who threw the rock. The police officers' lawyers admit the speaker did not encourage violence, did not command violence, did not use violent language, and certainly didn't throw the rock. He was up there speaking uh, when the rock was hurled. The trial court threw it out before it reached the jury. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is the intermediate appellate court in the federal system, for Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas reinstated the case. And last week, the Supreme Court refused to get involved. Holy shit. How could, how could the, in the American system, where you have the right to think as you wish, to say what you think, to read what you want, to publish what you say, and to do it in concert with others, that's the freedom of assembly. What good is the freedom of speech if there's no audience? To do it in concert with others. All this is not only a natural right, it's expressly protected by the Constitution. By making this guy potentially liable because of what an unknown, unnamed, unseen assailant did, they have effectively chilled the freedom of speech in those three states. It's beyond me. Only <clears throat> Justice Sotomayor <clears throat> dissented from the Supreme Court's refusal to hear the case. The other eight didn't want to have anything to do with it. Now it goes back to a trial court for a trial. The young man could prevail at a trial after spending legal fees that he doesn't uh, have. Uh, and then it's going to appeal its way all the way up to the Supreme Court. I mean, this is like two drunks at a baseball, at a football game, blaming the quarterback because one of them punched the other one in the nose. It's, it's absurd, but that's what the Supreme Court has allowed to happen. And it's a right that is rarely litigated, rarely articulated, rarely thought about, but it's a very important right. James Madison called this right, freedom of assembly. You'll love this 
uh, Gerald, and I used the phrase in the piece, the right to shake your fist in the tyrant's face. Yeah. That's what freedom of assembly is. Whether the tyrant is a king, a president, or an overbearing police department, you have the right to gather people in front of the tyrant and say whatever you think without fear of retribution from the government. <sighs> Oh my God, this is, this is shocking. So, you know, you've been at a number of my peace rallies, Occupy Peace. Right. So if right. somebody in that peace rally did something. Attacked a local Kingston cop under this crazy case, you could be sued. I could Even be sued. Even though you didn't engage in an act of violence, you never commanded violence, you never encouraged violence, but you put those people together. It's outrageous. It's absurd. And it was for peace. <laughs> correct. 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 Make it even more absurd. It yes. was for the opposite of what happened. Uh, this is terrible. What, what, what you, what you've written here. I mean, I, this is shocking. It, it, I, I, I can't, I can't believe it that, that in, in reading this, you go, you go on to say that, that the, the officer whose lawyers have declined to identify. Right. So the, the, the assailant is unknown and the plaintiff, the cop, won't even say who he is. This is just so bizarre that the court would allow a case like this to move forward. But again, it's where, how this and, and what I said in the beginning about what you write about, what you talk about. I mean, it's week after week about all our loss of rights. And it just keeps getting worse. Last week, since we, since you and I spoke, the House passed an extension of 702 of FISA, which allows uh, federal agents to spy on foreign persons without warrants and the Americans uh, with whom they speak. Congressman Andy Biggs, a great, great defender of civil liberties, uh, introduced a simple piece of legislation to require the feds to get search warrants before they surveil Americans. That amendment was tied on the floor of the House, 212 in favor, 212 against. The conservative Republican Speaker of the House left the chair, went down into the well of the House and voted against the amendment, and so it lost. And the legislation passed after, after the legislation passed. The chair of the House intelligence committee and his democratic counterpart two thugs that are in the back pockets of the intelligence community the american spies added two sentences senator mike lee discovered this uh, yesterday and is uh, exposed it on the floor of the senate added two sentences to, to the legislation uh allowing the government to command your cable television carrier to give it access to the wires going into your house. Oh. That's where we are. Trump, God bless him, said the whole thing should go down the tubes. And then he embraced the guy that broke the tie uh, to defeat the Biggs uh, Amendment. Uh, the world is upside down. There is no right to privacy left in the United States. You know, I, I keep thinking about this. You know, every now and then I read about all the people leaving the country because of how this country is going down and our parents' generation and our grandparents, you know, this used to be the land of opportunity where everybody wanted to come to around the world. And a poll just came out recently that shows that America ranks 23rd in the most happiest countries of the world. Wow. Wow. That is very, very, very telling. I'm almost afraid to ask what was the happiest. <laughs> yeah, I, it was. It wasn't a, even a great place. I think it was like Finland or something like something jerk place. Yeah. But anyway, the, uh, the everybody go to judging freedom and the, the people that you're having on. I mean, nobody's doing what you're doing in the sense of the the the, the type of people you have on. What they know, the the intelligence of their their background. They've been there, know it and uh, talk about it from former guys with the, what, the MI6 to, uh, 
uh, gen- colonels and, and one after another. Well, you go mil- to mil- basically, military intelligence mm-hmm. and academia yep. who are basically banned from mainstream media. Banned. Yeah. I mean, well, Douglas McGregor will probably be the Secretary of Defense in the next Trump administration if Trump gets uh, elected. He was the senior of, uh, military advisor to Ron Paul when Ron ran for president. And he was in the DOD, number four in the DOD uh, in the last two years of Trump's last term. Colonel McGregor is absolutely brilliant. No mainstream media will put, media will put him on. Well, well, same, well, with, same with Scott Ritter. Same with Phil Giraldi, people that are friends of yours and mine, who expose their their former uh, comrades for what they're doing. Again, you and I met when you used to be on Fox, and I used to be on your show. Right. And I used to be on everybody all over the place. Oprah. The now Today neither Show. of us can get anywhere near Fox. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, yeah. And I used to be on Oprah, the Today Show, Good Morning America, CNN, ABC, CBS, everybody. But totally blacklisted. But anyway, uh, it, it's it's so so sad. I'm heartbroken, and you know, I was, I was just telling uh, Jane, my assistant, you know, last night I yeah I, you know sometimes you wake up in the middle of the night and can't get back to sleep, and I was reading this article that um, at least 13 killed, including seven children, after strike on Gaza's Al Magasi refugee camp. This is from CNN, mainstream news. At least 13 people were killed, including seven children and more than 25 injured after a strike targeted, however you say this, al Magazi refugee camp in central uh, Gaza on Tuesday. Graphic video obtained exclusively by CNN from eyewitness shows several casualties. Ready? scattered on the floor, including children with blood streaming around the area. Ugh. And I'm reading this. Oh, it goes on about people screaming, kids screaming, kids dead on the ground. Oh, I'm reading this at night and I'm saying, my God, could you imagine being there? Mm. Could you imagine this? And... That Gerald, this is going to make you feel worse. Who paid for it? We the American, did. Ta- the American taxpayer. Yeah. The American taxpayer paid for it. Thank you, and, Joe Biden. And if you come out against this, they throw out the shit that you're an anti-Semite. Well, they can say whatever uh, they want. What the Israeli, the Israeli government, John Mearsheimer, Jeffrey Sachs, Colonel Douglas McGregor, Scott Ritter, Phil Giraldi, all the same thing. The Israeli government is a criminal gang yep. engaged in mass murder. So tell us, you know, the um, you have all these great people on. And, huh, you know, here's here, this is an example of, of the hypocrisy of the news and how ridiculous most of it is. Um, oh, this is... <laughs> The uh, one person after another, Schultz over there in um, in in uh, uh, Germany, Germany Chancellor Schultz condemns Iran's attack on Israel. UN's Guterres condemns Iran attack on Israel. Calls for UNSC to take action. How come they never condemn Israel's attack on Iran? Well, Israel's attack on Iran, a eh? murdered two generals, B, killed 13 other civilians, C, was the destruction of an of a consulate attack to an embassy, which is absolutely protected even in wartime uh, under international law, specifically the Geneva Conventions to which uh, Israel uh, is a signatory. Iran's retaliation, A, they told the United States when it was going to come. B, they told Israel when it was going to come. C, they surgically attacked military and industrial sites. If you believe the the mainstream media, oh, Israel stopped everything. 
if you believe the truth, as it has eventually made its way out. Five intercontinental ballistic missiles got through, destroyed a, an Israeli um, uh, intelligence headquarters. People had evacuated because the uh, Iranians gave notice and rendered two military airports useless. And, 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 the, and, the, and the West is making it sound as though Iran was the aggressor. I'm smiling because it's so absurd that they would expect us to believe this nonsense. Again, go to judging freedom. He had Scott Ritter on your head. You had Colonel uh, Douglas McGregor. These are two pros that really know this stuff. Talking about the success of the Iranian attack. And, and people have no idea because the media saw, sells it a whole nother way. Israel stopped 99% of the drones and missiles coming in. That was the, that's the headline news. And again, Scott Ritter really makes it clear on exactly what they did, how they did it, and the success of the Iranians. The drone, and by the way, this is from the Israeli news. It cost Israel $1.3 billion in weapons weaponry to knock this stuff out 1.3 billion it cost iran 10 percent of that correct you're you're exactly correct so by sending these 300 drones the iranians uh, achieved two things one they caused the israelis to waste uh, so much of their ammunition shooting the drones down two iranian uh radar in each drone was a, a radar receptor showed exactly where the Israeli defenses are. So the Irans were intentionally a lost leader. They were there to be shot down. It was only intended for them to force the uh, Israelis uh, to waste ammunition, their so-called uh, Iron Dome. It was the missiles that were intended to get through and which succeeded in getting through once the drones had been dispensed with. <sighs> You, you know, wouldn't know it, that. You wouldn't know that from mainstream media, even no. from where I used to work at Fox. You wouldn't know that. No. You know, the um, the uh, now everybody in the West putting sanctions, more sanctions on Iran, punishing Iran, you know, for, for as the Bronx used to say, payback's a bitch. Yeah. You know, you attack the attacker. I'm a close combat guy. We don't, as, in, as, as a fighter, you don't want to. You don't want to get in a fight. I don't want to get in a fight. But if I'm going to be attacked, I'll attack the attacker. Right. That's the way of life. Correct. That's the natural human right to self defense. Yeah, but Iran is not allowed to have any self defense. So now they're putting more and more sanctions on them. The sanctions are going to just hurt more of the people. They don't mean anything to anybody, but shows you the hypocrisy. Now you ready for this? House approves resolution condemning Palestinian rallying cry as anti-Semitic. The House on Tuesday, this is from The Hill, adopted a resolution condemning as anti-Semitic the phrase from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Now, the last time I read the First Amendment, which was yesterday, it still said, Congress shall make no law infringing upon the freedom of speech. Who the hell do they think they are in the House of Representatives to take a phrase in the English language and condemn it. The whole purpose of the First Amendment was to prevent that from happening. Look at the little clowns that are running and ruining our lives. This House of Representatives, they only represent the people that give them money to run for office. Right. They don't represent us. They're right. little slime balls. How dare they? Yeah, you ready? The chamber voted 377 44 one on the measure with 43 progressives 
and Representative Thomas Massey opposing the measure. God gotcha. love Massey. <laughs> Can you imagine this? Now, it's anti-Semitic, right? This is from January 18th. Quote, for 30 years, I am consistent and I am saying something very simple. This is from Netanyahu. This conflict is not on the lack of a state of Palestinians, but the existence of the state, the Jewish state. Every area that we evacuate, we receive terrible terror against us. It happened in South Lebanon. Oh, wait a minute. What the hell are you doing in South Lebanon? Oh, in Gaza. What are you doing in Gaza? And also Judea and Samaria. Oh, you mean the West Bank? Which we did it. Quote, and therefore I clarify that in any other arrangement in the future, this is from Netanyahu, the state of Israel has to control the entire area from the river to the sea. Oh, wait a minute. I thought that language was anti-Semitic. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine this? Oh, and by the way, Netanyahu, Gallant, Smotrich, Bendiv, all you little arrogant boys, plus, 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 from Ben-Gurion to Golda Meir, none of you are Semites. You're Ashkenazi Jews from Eastern Europe, northeast of Turkey. You're Khazars. The Semites are Palestinians from the Mesopotamia region. Is that correct, Judge? Yes, it is historically and etymologically correct. They don't care. They'll tarnish anybody with anything. Look, you put your finger on it with two observations you've been making for years. One is he who pays the piper calls the tune. And the, and the donor class has an iron grip on the American government. And the other one of your succinct one-liners is when all else fails, they take you to war. Netanyahu is that close. My fingers are a half an inch apart from being kicked out of office and being arrested. His only hope, there you go, when all else fails, they take you to war. Trends Journal. His only hope is to continue uh, the war. Joe Biden's numbers are so bad, although the latest poll showed him in a tie with, with Trump, another story for another time, but he too wants to be a wartime uh, president. Oh, and just to raise your blood pressure one more notch, Lindsey Graham, bomb Tehran. He says that Joe Biden bombed Tehran. Oh, I wonder what Vladimir Putin would do about that. Crazy. These people are out of their minds, Gerald. It, that you, you nailed it. They're out of their minds. They're out of their minds. We have evil, demonic people that are running and ruining life on earth. And again, World War Three has begun. And it's only going to get worse. It's, it's going to be interesting to see what Israel does in retaliation for the attack uh, by Iran. Because if they retaliate at any significant level, this is going to escalate things beyond the control of anybody. And as you well know, there's that thing called the Samson option that they say in Israel that if we're losing, we're going nuclear. And it allegedly has between 200 to 400 nuclear warheads. Well, the Israelis are known to have stolen that uh, technology uh, from the United States, which, of course, looked the other way. Uh, Netanyahu claims that Iran has a nuclear weapon. The whole rest of the world knows Iran does not. Even those that hate Iran outside of Israel know that it does not. And if the Israelis are prepared to kill themselves uh, in order to attack Iran, Netanyahu's nuts. He's driving a suicide bus. Yeah, but again, if Netanyahu gets out, you got another maniac that's going to take his place. Correct. 
Correct. Everybody says, uh, oh, Benny Gantz is a nicer guy. Yeah, he's got a nicer personality. He's more of a killer. He's the former head of uh, of the IDF. And the yeah. last time he brought his troops into Gaza, they did the same thing on a smaller scale that they're doing now. The West didn't even know about it at the time. And, and here's another thing that everybody forgets. When this war began after Hamas attacked on October 7th of last year, all the line was that we're going to get Hamas. We're going to get Hamas. They bombed the place into ruins. It was Hamas in every building? I just read you the article about these kids playing soccer out there, getting bombed to death. What, 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 over what? Some 35,000 uh, civilians have been killed in, in, in Gaza. Some 80,000 seriously wounded. Some... 80% of the place destroyed. Oh, we're doing this to get Hamas. Who are you talking to? I mean, what it is, this is murder in the first degree in front of everybody's eyes. And the United States keeps sending more and more weapons to slaughter the people. Correct. Where is the outrage here? Where is a penny from the billionaires for peace? Not a nickel, not a dime, because they're all slime. They're all afraid of uh, the Israeli lobby of APAC and, and those folks. <laughs> APAC is a uh, foreign lobbying organization, which uh, doesn't have to register. All other foreign agents have to register with the uh, Department of Justice. Yeah. Isn't it interesting? Except for Israeli foreign agents, all others have to register. Well, there's a judge you're being not fair because don't you understand? They're the chosen people. They could do what they want. <laughs> You know, again, I don't want to hear this crap. Don't tell me that God gave you this land. How about if I don't believe in your God? Could you handle that? I'm not telling you to believe in my God. Save it. Oh, no, it's in the Torah, chapter 6, section 8. You know, I don't want to hear it. This is stolen land. Again, wrote about it in detail in your Trends Journal uh, back in 2006 about the um, Crusades 2000. That began in, in 1917 with the Balfour Declaration. That his majesty's government declares that this, the Jewish people will you know, settle in the Palestinian land. What do you mean his majesty's government? Some murderer from the royal family where the sun never sets on the British Empire? They made up this crap. Right. What are we going to do, Judge? I don't know what we're going to do, Gerald. I mean, you and I hammer away at this every single day. We write articles, we do interviews, we post the interviews, we do our best to uh, influence people. I think slowly, slowly, slowly the needle is moving in our direction as people recognize the moral depravity uh, of the uh, Israeli government. But I don't think that's going to resonate with the American government because uh, APAC and the donor class control the American uh, government. The House of Representatives is about to vote to send Israel another $13 billion. That oh. vote should come by the end of the week. By the way, they're also going to send $5 billion to Taiwan and $61 billion to Ukraine. Ukraine's on its uh, deathbed. As our country is rotting in front of our eyes. Yes. Aren't roads lovely with all those potholes? Mm -hmm. Don't you love all the migrants on the street and the homeless? Isn't it great that 63% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck for more money for the military industrial complex and for murder and for war? Where is the outrage? You're right. You're right. So anyway, my suggestion to everybody listening is to do anything you can in the name of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Get in the best shape you can physically, morally, and spiritually. And do something positive to help anybody you can in any positive way. We have to move in a direction of a higher spirit. Because these low lives that are running our lives are going to bring us life on earth is going to be hell on earth. Because nuclear annihilation is on the near horizon if we don't have peace. Thank you, Judge, for being here. I very much appreciate it. We're honored to have you, and we'll see you next week. And everybody, remember, go to Judging Freedom. And here's the judge that knows about freedom. See you next week. Thank you, Gerald. All the best.